All right, I think we got our spots. <laughs> yeah, we got Well, good morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. It's wonderful to join all of you, uh, the Prime Minister, uh, Minister Kevin Klein, uh, Mayor Scott Gillingham, and my Manitoba colleagues, Dan Van Dell and MP Kevin Lamru, uh, here on Treaty 1 territory, the homeland of the Red River Métis, uh, here at the Forks, uh, the meeting of two rivers and the meeting place uh, for Indigenous peoples for thousands of years. Water is life for Indigenous communities, farmers, fishers, uh, cities and towns, businesses. Uh, it is life for all of us. Canadians know this in their bones. Public opinion polls going back decades always rank fresh water as our most important natural resource. And we are so, so blessed in this country to be home for 20% of the world's fresh water. The Great Lakes of North America we share with the U.S. is the largest freshwater body on Earth. Lake Winnipeg, that uh, we in Manitoba like to call Canada's sixth Great Lake, is the world's 11th largest. We are a freshwater nation. But because of climate change, because of pollution, Canada's waterways are challenged like never before. We've seen record droughts, floods, and toxic algae blooms here in Manitoba and across the country, threatening uh, community health, the environment, and our economy. Climate change is real. It is being felt through water impacts to our communities from coast to coast to coast. That's why we need a Canada Water Agency, a federal collaboration and partnership agency that will work with provinces, territories, municipalities, uh, indigenous communities and governments, as well as a diversity of stakeholders to better protect and manage our precious fresh water. The agency will be there to share the latest freshwater science, to serve as a major data hub, and to fund watershed initiatives through the federal government's renewed freshwater action plan. And what better place to locate the headquarters of this agency than in Winnipeg, Manitoba, in a province of 100,000 lakes, yes. In a province that experiences every conceivable water challenge that we face in Canada. Just a few shout outs before I pass it on to our next speaker, I would like to uh, particularly acknowledge uh, our, our former colleague, uh, Ralph Goodale, former Federal Minister, now High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, who was the original uh, government proponent for the Canada Water Agency in the wake of the Harper government dissolving the Prairie Farm Rehabilitation Administration in 2012. A big thank you to Canada's water community, environmental groups, agricultural groups, business organizations, indigenous organizations, some of whom are with us uh, today, who fought for an independent departmental agency with a significant budget and power to make key decisions. A note of thanks to Premier Stephenson for her advocacy, and Minister Klein, we, there you are. <laughs> we look forward to working with you on your very forward-looking uh, water strategy. Uh, the biggest thank you of all goes to Prime Minister Trudeau, who has been a freshwater champion all of his life. In the end, it was his signature that establishes the Canada Water Agency as an independent departmental agency and its headquarters located here, right in the heart of the prairies. Thank you, Prime Minister, for all of that and for allowing me to work with Ministers Jonathan Wilkinson and Stephen Gilbo to bring us to this special day. Prime Minister. Bonjour tout le monde. It's always great to be in Winnipeg, especially alongside our outstanding voice for the city, Terry Duguid, along with Dan and Kevin. Thank you very much to our team. Scott, Mayor Gillingham, thank you so much for your leadership uh, here in Winnipeg and on these uh, important issues. And I also want to uh, recognize uh, Minister Klein. Uh, thank you for your leadership and for being here today uh, for this announcement. Here at the Forks, overlooking the Red River, we're reminded how lucky we are to have such a beautiful country to call home. A few minutes ago, I was uh, having an opportunity to walk through some of the shoreline brush with young people who are learning about local plants and animals. Uh, and hopefully 
uh, about paddling the waters behind us. I wish I could have got out in the canoe today, but uh, uh, timing didn't allow for that. So uh, get out paddling for me next chance you get. This is the planet that young people will be inheriting, and it's up to all of us to protect it. Déjà, on a posé des gestes sans précédent pour sauvegarder nos eaux ici au Canada. Alors que moins de 1 de nos aires marines et côtières étaient protégées en 2015, cette superficie est passée à plus de 14 aujourd'hui. Mais il reste beaucoup de travail à faire. This province, as was pointed out, is home to over, uh, over 100,000 lakes and rivers, with water flowing in from the Rockies and the states all the way out to Hudson Bay. So it only makes sense that it's here in Winnipeg that we're setting up the new Canada Water Agency. The agency will be a hub, bringing together the best and brightest to coordinate our efforts to protect Canada's fresh water. I want to recognize Terry's leadership and so many others on this agency. Today, I can announce that one of the first priorities of the agency will be to update the Canada Water Act. The threats and realities facing our environment have changed since it was written in 1970. Updating this act is about ensuring we have the tools to work with provinces and territories on protecting and restoring shared waters. We're focused on moving forward and taking real action. To be honest, that hasn't been the approach of every government. For decades upon decades, farmers relied on the Prairie Farm Rehabilitation Administration. The decision of Stephen Harper's Conservatives to kill the PFRA was just a bad call. So when we got elected, we made a different choice. Since 2015, we've stepped up to support water management in the prairies and right across the country. And by setting up this agency here in the prairies, we're recognizing the generations-long leadership of people here when it comes to water. Of course, the Canada Water Agency is just one part of our work. Budget 2023 committed historic funding to clean up and restore Lake Winnipeg, the Great Lakes, Lake of the Woods, and other waters across the country. Let me recognize the partnership of Indigenous communities and their reminder that water is life. Outside the work of the agency, we remain focused on lifting all remaining long-term drinking water advisories, like we've done in communities like Shoal Lake. See, back in 2016, I got to visit Shoal Lake 40. As most of you know, Shoal Lake is where Winnipeg gets its drinking water. But it was absolutely all the more unacceptable that the people living on Shoal Lake didn't themselves have clean drinking water, even while they were providing it to Winnipeg. So we took action. Over the past years, we built the Freedom Road to enable year-round all-weather access. We built a water treatment plant. We've delivered on our commitment that people there have clean drinking water. And there's still lots to do across the country, but every place there is a drinking water advisory in Indigenous communities, there is a project leader and a plan and funding to get it done. We're committed to doing that work in partnership with Indigenous peoples. Just like we're moving forward on drinking water, we're continuing to support communities on flooding. We all know there'll be more and more extreme weather events because of climate change, and that means more flooding. Indigenous communities, farmers, so many people here are on the front lines of these disasters. So we'll continue to support communities in emergencies and continue to move forward on long-term solutions with the national adaptation strategy and other investments. Qu'il s'agisse de préserver la propreté de nos rivières et de nos lacs pour nos enfants et nos petits-enfants ou de garder les gens à l'abri des catastrophes tout en maintenant la force de nos communautés, notre objectif est de bâtir des communautés en santé aujourd'hui et un avenir solide pour les générations à venir. There are still some politicians in Ottawa who say we have to choose between a healthy environment and a healthy economy. Choose between clean waters or a good job. How can you sustain a family farm or a local paddling business or even a city without clean water? 
Our team knows that it's by investing in communities, in climate action and good jobs, in child care and public health care, that we stand up for the middle class and ensure our kids ensure a bright, brighter tomorrow for everyone. Merci tout le monde. Je suis maintenant très heureux d'inviter le ministre Klein à prendre la parole. Before we get to questions, I'll turn it over uh, to Kevin. Over to you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, and uh, as Minister of Environment and Climate, it's my pleasure to be here on behalf of our Premier, Heather Stephenson, and all my colleagues at the Manitoba Legislature to not only welcome our Prime Minister to Manitoba and to Winnipeg, but to also say thank you for the official announcement today that the new Canadian Water Agency headquarters will be right here in Winnipeg and Manitoba. Water is central to the welfare of our natural environment, our families, and our communities. It is the foundation of our economy and our hopes for future prosperity and development. We are lucky to have an abundance of high quality water resources that we sustainably protect and manage for future generations. As uh, the Prime Minister mentioned, we are the home of over 100,000 lakes, including Lake Winnipeg, which covers about 16% of the province of Manitoba. There is a lot of expertise in Manitoba when it comes to water. This includes the Lake Winnipeg Foundation. It uh, includes the International Institute for Sustainable Development and the Fresh Water uh, Institute, to name but a few. Our Premier made it a priority to advocate for this agency to come to Manitoba. And we are very grateful that the work between our Premier and the Prime Minister, and also, of course, our friend Terry Duguid and others, has resulted in today's announcement. Not only will this bring new investment and create new jobs, it will also build on and complete the great work on, our, on water already being done in Manitoba. No individual, industry sector, or one government agency is solely responsible for water. Innovative solutions, collaborations, and long-lasting partnerships between governments, business, and water stakeholders, including our Indigenous communities, will be required to meet Canada's water challenges and opportunities. I look forward to hearing more from our Prime Minister and others on exploring how we can support each other in strengthening our knowledge and understanding of Canada's water resources and sh our shared environmental goals. Mr. Prime Minister, I want to again thank you for choosing Manitoba and Winnipeg as the uh, home for Canada's water agency and recognizing the importance of water conservation. Miigwech, Miasi, thank you. And I would now like to introduce a friend and former colleague, Mayor of Winnipeg, Scott Gillingham. Thank you, Minister. Well, good morning, everyone. I want to acknowledge today that uh, Winnipeg is located on Treaty 1 territory in the traditional homeland of the Métis Nation. And as the Prime Minister said, our clean drinking water does come from Shoal Lake 40 in Treaty 3 territory. Thank you so much, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, Minister Klein, Minister Vandell, MPs uh, Terry Duguid and Kevin Lamroux. It's so good to have all of you with us today. As Mayor, it is a real honour to stand here today to celebrate our city's selection as the headquarters for the new Canada Water Agency. I want to recognize all those who've been involved in getting us to this point, but I want to take a moment to single out Mr. Terry Duguid. Member of Parliament Terry Duguid, we know as Parliamentary Secretary, uh, he has committed to this work, and I want to recognize his contribution for this historic announcement. Uh, Mr. Duguid has a long track record of advocacy related to environmental issues, uh, dating back to his days on Winnipeg City Council. And so I know without question, uh, in many ways, he and others, but especially uh, Terry, have been in many ways the driving force behind this agency. And truly, Terry, I just want to say thank you so much for your work and the work of your colleagues as well. Thank you. Yeah. Our city understands the profound importance of water. You've heard that already because it's so much tied to our identity. The reason the city exists is because of the forks of the two rivers located right behind me. Our summer culture is built around the idea of going to the lake. And we've shown our greatest moments of resilience in this province and our civic spirit in battling floods. 
the floods of 1980, 1997, or probably 1997 especially, and especially the flood of 1950. And it was the flood of 1950 that was the inspiration for what is possibly the greatest piece of infrastructure in our province, the Red River Floodway. Water is also critical to our economic development. Nearly all the, nearly all the power generated in this power comes from hydroelectricity. And I've had meetings with site selectors and large companies looking to build new facilities in our, in our area and access to hydroelectricity and clean water and safe wastewater treatment is critical to those decisions. Of course, Manitoba's agriculture sector and our tourism industry relies upon water at all times of the year. In the middle of winter, one of our city's greatest tourist attractions drawing attention across the country is skating, the skating trail that runs right by us here at the Forks. We also have a rich legacy of research and innovation as seen in our institutions, many of which have been mentioned already, like the Freshwater Institute and the International Institute for Sustainable Development. The Canada Water Agency will now be part of this legacy, amplifying the role in national and global conversations on the importance of water management and sustainability. Having this agency in our city will serve as a vital economic engine for Winnipeg also, creating hundreds of jobs. It will build on the expertise that we already have in place at the ISD and the Freshwater Institute, the universities and Manitoba Hydro and other agencies, and will bring more sustainable jobs to our area. This is an economic development opportunity that will transform Winnipeg, sparking a new era of prosperity and growth. And so thank you, Minister Klein, for your commitment also uh, to this work. Thank you again, Mr. Prime Minister, so much to you and your federal government. Thank you for choosing Winnipeg. We look forward to working with you in our new role as the water capital of Canada. Merci, Miigwech. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, we will now take questions from the media for up to 20 minutes. Nous allons prendre des questions des journalistes pour une durée de 20 minutes. First question, Canadian Press. Oh, hi, Steve Lambert from the Canadian Press. Uh, Prime Minister, after seeing the conclusion that Mr. Johnson uh, made in his report yesterday about Handong, are you ready to welcome that Member of Parliament uh, back into the caucus? Is there a route back? As you know, uh, Handong uh, chose to step away from caucus so that he could clear his name, so that he could uh, continue to serve his community while he was uh, fighting the allegations laid against him. Mr. Johnston was very uh, clear. Uh, about uh, the substance of those allegations or the non-substance of those allegations uh, in his report published yesterday. And I look forward to uh, conversations with Han about uh, whether he, he wants to come back and whether his, uh, uh, his fight to clear his name is, is ongoing or, or his perspective on this. Uh, it's his choice, but I look forward to that conversation. CBC. Yeah. Hi, Prime Minister Cam McIntosh, CBC National. So sticking on foreign interference, given that the opposition leaders seem to have rejected David Johnson's report and are now questioning his integrity, would you look to have someone else oversee the public hearings aspect of this? Um, first of all, they're not questioning his report. They're only questioning his integrity. Uh, I'd suggest that opposition leaders and indeed Canadians take a look at his report uh, and understand the work that he's done in this. This is an eminent Canadian who has served in many capacities over decades, was appointed Governor General by Stephen Harper, and uh, has done extraordinary work on an extremely serious issue. Um, we have further offered to all opposition party leaders that they get the security clearance necessary to look at all the intelligence that went into forming the conclusions in that report. And further, we've asked uh, our two predominant and preeminent national security oversight agencies, NSIRA and NSICOP, which is made up of parliamentarians from all different parties, the capacity to look at all the intelligence that grounded the report that Mr. Johnston has put out uh, to see for themselves and explain whether they agree with those conclusions or not. So I would simply ask Canadians and indeed 
uh, opposition leaders to actually look at the substance of this very serious issue and take it with the seriousness that it deserves, not the partisanship that seems to be running rampant right now, combined with personal attacks against uh, a, an esteemed former governor general. Et la même question en français, s'il vous plaît. Je suggérerais aux chefs de l'opposition et aux Canadiens euh, de regarder attentivement le travail qu'a fait M. Johnston. Et quand on entend les attaques des chefs d'opposition, on voit que c'est des attaques personnelles contre M. Johnston. Ce n'est pas un désaccord avec ses conclusions, un questionnement de son travail. Surtout que on a affaire à tous les chefs de l'opposition d'avoir euh, d'accéder à la cote de sécurité nécessaire pour pouvoir regarder l'intelligence sur laquelle ces conditions, euh, ces conclusions ont été fondées. Et on a passé à nos agences de sécurité la capacité non seulement de regarder l'intelligence aussi, mais de partager s'ils sont en accord ou en désaccord avec les conclusions de M. Johnston. Donc, dans toutes les critiques qu'on entend aujourd'hui, il y a beaucoup d'attaques personnelles contre un ancien gouverneur général d'une intégrité reconnue, mais pas beaucoup de raisons ou de, de, de démonstrations où ils sont en désaccord avec ses conclusions. Et je pense que sur un enjeu aussi, aussi important et sérieux que euh, l'ingérence étrangère, les Canadiens méritent d'avoir des leaders qui prennent ça au sérieux et qui s'engagent sur la substance et non seulement juste la partisanerie et des attaques personnelles. Prochaine question. Lindsay Gay pour Radio-Canada. Euh, sans enquête publique, euh, tout ce que nous savons sur l'ingérence chinoise provient des fuites médiatiques. Euh, vous n'avez pas peur que ce soit seulement la pointe de l'iceberg? Êtes-vous confiant d'avoir vraiment un portrait complet de la situation? Au contraire, je dirais que vous vous trompez carrément quand vous dites que tout ce qu'on sait, tout ce que le public sait sur l'ingérence, euh, c'est par euh, des fuites illégales. Le rapport qu'a publié M. Johnston est très clair là-dessus. Il y a un rapport que le Comité des parlementaires sur la sécurité et l'intelligence a publié euh, il y a quelques années qui va en grand détail, un rapport public sur l'ingérence étrangère. Ça fait depuis 2015, en tant que gouvernement, que nous travaillons là-dessus. En 2018, quand on a été le hôte euh, de, euh, du sommet du G7 à Charlevoix, au Québec, on a mis de l'avant un mécanisme de réponse rapide du G7 pour traiter de l'ingérence étrangère. On a mis sur place un protocole pour les élections en début 2019 qui a pu s'assurer que les élections en 2019-2021 euh, soient intègres. Alors, ça fait des années qu'on parle de l'ingérence et qu'on établit des mécanismes et des moyens de pouvoir continuer de lutter contre l'ingérence étrangère. Et nous allons continuer de le faire. Et d'ailleurs, le travail que M. Johnston va faire cet été avec des audiences publiques pour regarder les prochaines étapes à prendre va continuer cette conversation sérieuse. Mais c'est une conversation qu'on mène avec les Canadiens depuis bien des années. On va continuer de mener. CTV National. Good morning, Prime Minister. Jill McEshawn with CTV National News. Uh, part of the findings from David Johnson, still on the interference questions, uh, said that these leaks, um, the person behind these leaks, he said that malice cannot be ruled out. Do you believe the leaks were done in malice? I think Mr. Johnson's report speaks for itself, and I can certainly say that uh, the relevant authorities, including the RCMP, are, are looking into and following up on these leaks. Global. Hi, Prime Minister. Marnie Blunt from Global News. Uh, the leader of the opposition says he doesn't trust the tools that your government has in place to fight uh, foreign interference, including the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians. That's overseen by your office, so why not have that committee uh, reporting to Parliament rather than your office? I think it is worth remembering that on questions of national security, the government that Pierre Polyev was part of, Stephen Harper's government, refused to allow any oversight or any, uh, any uh, public accounting or transparency for parliamentarians of national security. And indeed, in that 2015 election, 
we propose to create a mechanism whereby parliamentarians from all different parties would be able to engage with and oversee everything our national security agencies do. This was something that Pierre Polyev campaigned against in 2015. He didn't think parliamentarians from all different parties should be able to dive in deeply to everything that our security agencies would do. That was one of the big issues around national security that we had an election on in 2015. Now, Mr. Polyev is choosing to be consistent in his being consistently wrong, in that he still doesn't think parliamentarians of all different parties should get the security clearances necessary to dig into what our intelligence services and agencies are doing. But we know it is reassuring for Canadians to know that it's not just the government and one particular party that's in power making sure that our intelligence agencies are both doing everything necessary to protect Canadians and abiding by the laws and the rules and the values that are so important to Canadians, but that it's parliamentarians from all different parties. Now, why Mr. Polyev continues to be against transparency and why he continues to say, and this is really important, that the work that Mr. Johnston's doing is not serious and is not correct, when he refuses so far to actually see the information and the intelligence that underpins the conclusions of Mr. Johnston. Now, everyone here will understand that when it comes to matters of national security, when it comes to spies and foreign intelligence, we cannot share publicly a lot of the very sensitive and secret work they do to keep Canadians safe every day. But we have offered to the leaders of all the parties in the House the capacity to get the security clearances necessary so that they can look at that raw intelligence themselves and see that the conclusions that Mr. Johnston drew are the right ones. And Pierre Polyev is choosing to sit behind a veil of ignorance instead. He doesn't want the facts to get in the way of a good political argument or a personal attack. I think Canadians have to ask themselves the question, is that a serious leader? Is that a serious way to handle something as important as foreign countries trying to mess with our democracy, with our businesses, with our diaspora communities? On an issue like this, we have to be grounded in facts. That's what this government is doing. That's what David Johnson has done. That's what Pierre Polyev refuses to do. En 2015, quand Stephen Harper était au pouvoir et quand Pierre Polièvre était au gouvernement de Stephen Harper, il y a eu de grands débats sur la sécurité nationale. Et moi, j'ai proposé, mon parti a proposé, de créer un mécanisme par lequel les parlementaires de tous les différents partis allaient pouvoir obtenir les codes de sécurité nécessaires pour regarder de façon approfondie tout ce que nos euh, agences de sécurité et de renseignement faisaient. Pierre Polièvre a fait campagne contre cet engagement. Mais quand on a gagné en 2015, on l'a créé. Et on a maintenant un comité de parlementaires où des parlementaires de tous les différents partis regardent au fond des choses dans tout ce que font nos agences de sécurité et de renseignement. M. Polièvre continue de faire campagne et de s'objecter à euh, ce, ce, ce comité-là et à dénigrer leur travail, mais nous allons continuer de s'assurer que ce comité fait leur travail. Mais en plus de ça, nous avons offert à tous les chefs des partis d'opposition 
d'obtenir la cote de sécurité nécessaire pour que eux ils puissent voir l'intelligence accumulée par nos agences de renseignement et de sécurité pour comprendre le bon fondement des conclusions de M. Johnston. C'est quelque chose que euh, le comité de parlementaire va faire et c'est quelque chose qu'on offre au euh, chef des partis. Mais M. Polièvre s'inquiète que s'il connaissait les vrais faits et voyait les, la vraie intelligence, il ne pourrait pas continuer ses attaques partisanes, personnelles et non fondées. Est-ce que c'est du leadership, ça? De choisir l'ignorance pour pouvoir continuer des attaques non fondées plutôt que de s'engager de façon sérieuse sur une question aussi importante que l'ingérence des pays étrangers sur lequel nous devons tous être unis pour défendre notre démocratie. Je pense que c'est une illustration très, très claire du manque de sérieux et de leadership responsable de Pierre Polièvre. Winnipeg Free Press. Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, Chris Kitching from the Winnipeg Free Press. Uh, I was hoping to get an update on your government's review of the report on the feasibility of searching the Prairie Green landfill just north of Winnipeg, and also ask if uh, your government will provide funding for a search. Obviously, this is a heartbreaking situation. Uh, the uh, violence uh, done to these women, uh, the violence that is ongoing uh, in missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls uh, is a heartbreak, not just for the city of Winnipeg or for Manitobans, but for all Canadians. And that's why the federal government is committed to being a partner in how we move forward. We know uh, that the chiefs and others are looking carefully at the recommendations, and as are we. And we will continue to be there to support, and we will uh, make decisions uh, when the time comes. But I can tell you that we will be there. All right. Next question, CTV. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, how crucial is it for your party to have good showing in the upcoming by-elections, including the ones here in Manitoba? Because you are making some stops today in, in, in those ridings. In every single by-election held in this country, since the day I became leader, I've shown up. Whether it's a, a longtime Liberal seat or one that my party has never won since Confederation, I show up. Because my job as Prime Minister, and our job as government, is to be there for all Canadians, regardless of who they vote for. And by-elections are an opportunity for me uh, to get out and meet with people on the ground and talk about the important choice that people get to make about how we move forward as a country. Do we continue to invest in stronger communities with things like child care and public health care and dental care? Do we continue to protect the environment while we create great jobs? Or do we choose the path of anger, of fact-free discourse, of mistrust of science, of division and polarization? The choices people get to make in these upcoming by-elections are a reflection of the choice the Canadians are going to get to make a couple of years from now in the general election. What kind of country do we want to be? Are we a country of anger and polarization and division that hides from the future? Are we a confident place that knows to invest in itself, to draw on diversity as our greatest strength, to respect Indigenous peoples and partner with them, to protect the environment because that's how you create great jobs? The choice people are going to make in these by-elections and in the election in a couple of years is about who we are and who we want to be and what kind of world we want to build for our kids. And I, for one, am always looking forward to engaging with Canadians from coast to coast to coast 
about how important that choice is. And that's what I'll be doing later today. En français, s'il vous plaît. Depuis mes tout débuts en tant que premier ministre, en tant que chef du Parti libéral, j'ai toujours été présent sur le terrain dans les élections partielles, que ce soit les comtés qu'on a toujours gagnés en tant que Parti libéral ou les comtés qu'on n'a jamais gagnés en tant que parti. C'est un moment pour aller rencontrer les gens et pour parler du choix qu'on doit faire pour aller vers l'avant. Parce que dans ces partiels et dans l'élection qui s'en vient dans deux ans, les Canadiens vont avoir un choix fondamental à faire sur on est quel genre de pays. Est-ce qu'on est un pays qui mise sur la peur, sur la division, sur la méfiance des faits et de la science? Ou est-ce qu'on est un pays confiant, qui reconnaît les défis de maintenant et de l'avenir, mais qui sait les adresser, qui crée des partenariats avec les peuples autochtones, qui investit dans les soins de santé publique, dans les soins dentaires, dans les garderies, les centres de petite enfance? Est-ce qu'on protège l'environnement en créant des bons emplois? C'est ça le choix auquel les Canadiens vont être confrontés et dans ces partiels et dans les élections quand ils viendront. Et pour ma part, j'ai toujours très hâte de continuer ces conversations et d'aider les Canadiens à faire le bon choix. Okay, we have time for two more questions. Hi, Prime Minister Josh Crabb, CBC Manitoba, uh, on the Canada Water Agency. And Thank you for a question on water. <laughs> <laughs> I understand uh, legislation will be introduced by the end of this year to create the Canada Water Agency. Where within Winnipeg will it be located and when can Manitobans expect to see it up and running? Um, as you know, it's already a big thing for Winnipeg that it be in Winnipeg and we're working uh, with uh, the municipality and uh, the province on uh, physical infrastructure and location. I can tell you, this is an investment in Budget 2023 of close to $750 million dollars that'll be uh, led right out of here uh, in Manitoba uh, to handle uh, the challenges that we're facing around water, not just here in the prairies, but right across the country. Number of conversations I've had with farmers who yeah, supported Mr. Harper in other ways, but couldn't understand why he killed the PFRA that had been there for prairie farmers for generations. And it was a commitment that we made to bring this back. There's lots of work for it to do, uh, and uh, we're going to continue to grow it over the coming years. But I do want to take a moment to recognize not just Terry Duguid's leadership on water, uh, but all the scientists and folks who've been working in developing water expertise uh, here in Winnipeg and in Manitoba that is so impactful right across the country uh, that made it uh, a very clear decision to bring that Canada Water Agency to here in Winnipeg. All right, last question, City. Hi, uh, Prime Minister. Thank you for taking our questions today. Um, here in Winnipeg, we recently saw the closure of the city's first magical mushroom dispensary. Some of the folks who have been representing that dispensary from a legal perspective say that there's a lack of consistency kind of across the country in terms of how these mushrooms, magical mushrooms, are kind of regulated. Some places in Toronto, Vancouver, able to operate. Shops in Winnipeg shut down quite quickly. How would you respond to concerns that there's an inconsistency in terms of how this substance is being regulated in, in, in Canada, sir? One of the... Uh, one of the challenging parts, but one of the best parts of being a federation uh, is that on a whole bunch of things, different provinces have different approaches. Uh, just think of drinking age, which is different from one province to the next, between 18 and 19. Uh, think of the way they choose to regulate and uh, run their health care systems. There is always going to be a certain amount of variety on many issues across the country, and that allows provincial governments to respond to local priorities and local needs. Uh, when it comes to the criminal code, the criminal code uh, is the same right across the country, and that's uh, what the government will continue to ensure. All right, thank you very much. This concludes the press conference. Ceci met fin à la conférence de presse. Merci. Merci beaucoup.